Hi, this is Jasinder from SWA. A very good day to all participants. Welcome to today's webinar co-organized by Singapore Water Association and the International Water Association. In today's webinar, three companies and one university will be sharing with us on the various sustainable water solutions and how these three goals are met. Energy efficiency, sustainability and productivity. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to go over the usual drill on the housekeeping. To ensure a smooth session, please mute your microphone and turn off the camera. You may communicate with us after the event. Please share your questions in the chat where you will provide, try to provide answers where possible in the QA segment. You will see a new feature in webinar at bottom right of your screen. The three vertical, three horizontal dots. When you clear, when you click on that, you will see a Q&A dialog box appearing, and you can type your questions over there. Uh, do identify yourself so we can respond to any unanswered questions. We will be recording this session and reserve the rights to the video. Please complete a post-event survey after the Q&A segment. Uh, quickly on the disclaimer: all information shared is for general information only and does not contain or convey any legal advice or administrative assistance. Information shared today is true and accurate as of publication date. SWA, IWA and the presenting companies reserves all rights in the provided materials. We will be recording this webinar on online video platform. It will be shared and kept for as long as it serves a business purpose for all the association. By attending this webinar, you are giving your consent to this recording. Now, without further ado, I would like to invite Ms. Vivian Song to give us the opening address. Ms. Vivian is the Executive Director of Singapore Water Association. Over to you, Ms. Vivian. Thank you, Jasminda. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar co-organized by SWA and IWA. The impact of COVID-19 is far-reaching than many of us could have expected 18 months ago. Despite the challenges, we have been working very closely with our Water Alliance partners to support our members and Singapore companies through knowledge sharing, networking opportunities, and partnerships. Today's event is one such platform where SWA and IWA collaborate to actively engage in the development of a future ready, innovative, and sustainable wastewater infrastructure in the region and globally. Next slide, please. SWA was formed in February 2004 as a trade organization to represent and promote the interests of Singapore companies in the water sector. It plays a significant role in developing a vibrant and dynamic water cluster, and we aspire to promote Singapore as the regional hub for all water-related services and technologies. To date, we have 268 members from an initially nine founding members in 2004, and we inspire to grow to 300 member companies by 2021. Before I move on, can I just check whether you can see the slides that we are presenting right now, everyone? Yes, it's good. Yeah, okay. Next slide, please, Jess. These are some of our member companies. They include all parts of the water value chain presented by system integrators, EPC, consultants, OEMs, MNCs, LLEs, SMEs, as well as local startups. Next, please. This demonstrates the activities of SWA at the grants. Besides physical classes, SWA started to conduct online masterclass training courses for the water professionals since July 2020. The quarterly Singapore Water Industry Night Swing is a highlight in our calendar of activities. It has always been well attended, creating a very useful networking platform for all our members to interact, exchange, and forge deals. Next, please. 
In terms of international partnership, SWA has signed MOUs with foreign embassies such as the High Commission of Canada, the Singaporean German Chamber of Industry, the Taiwan External Trade Development Council, and the US Department of Commerce. We have close working relationship with the Israel Embassy and the Denmark Embassy as well. Moving on, we hope to foster our existing partnerships with regional water associations such as IWA, Australian Water Association, Malaysian Water Association, Philippines Water Works Association, and IDA. Next slide, please. We also work closely with Research Institute, Water Alliance partners such as IFFI, SPATS, and Waste Management and Recycling Association of Singapore, Singapore Business Federation, Singapore Manufacturing Federation, and the Singapore Chinese Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We hope through these partnerships, we can further groom the Singapore companies and build a more vibrant and dynamic industry with technology innovations and collaborations. Next. For the past 17 years, SWA has organized and led local companies overseas to participate in trade fairs under the Singapore Pavilion with grant support from Enterprise Singapore. Hopefully next year, we'll gear up the roster of trade shows with the lift on travel restriction. Regionally, SWA organized overseas technology and business mission to Munich, Israel, Taiwan, Melbourne, Nanjing, Vietnam, Myanmar, Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines. While we also hosted conferences and seminars for the local water companies. Next. Fostering partnerships continues with virtual expos and conferences, webinars, and even site, virtual site visits despite COVID. Since June 2020, we have contacted to almost 60 virtual events, masterclass courses, and sharing sessions, including tours to POP Chachukan Waterworks, Ulu Pantang Water Reclamation Plant, and SPETS Experimental Power Grid Center at Jurong Island. Next, please. Since April 2020, we are also working closely with businesses to help mobilize, stabilize, and resume operations with our SG United updates, SWA Assist, SWA Watch initiatives on our website to ease our members' difficulties with the current economy uncertainties. We have also launched the SWA Marketplace Assist platform, MAP for short, for our members to step up or seek help from fellow members or partners. The aim is to facilitate business continuity within the community and to tie over challenges arising during these difficult times and disruption to the value supply chain. Next. SWAT, meaning SWA Training, is an online e-learning platform initiated and developed by SWA for the convenience of certification and continued learning for the water professionals and the OLM contractors. It can be accessed through mobile and PCs through the website access without face-to-face uh, -face interactions or site coaching. We hope to launch this platform by end of June or early July with a very nominal yearly subscription. Next, Jess. Plans are also underway to launch a 24-7 SWA Digital Expo by September 2021, where we enhance the user experience with Netflix star type of uh, booth browsing, digital name card exchange module, vendor portal and registration module with sharing channels on local grants and support, local and overseas project opportunities, and local and overseas job hosting. The last slide, please. And thank you, everyone. I hope you will have fruitful collaborations and discussion after this event. For further queries, you may contact myself or our colleagues at the SWA Executive Office. Thank you.
Thank you very much for the opening address, uh, Ms. Vivian. Next, it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Hong Lee to give the welcome address. Dr. Lee is the Asia and Oceania Regional Director of International Water Association. Over to you, Dr. Lee. Thank you, Yasvinder. And thank you, Vivian. And hello, everyone. And thank you for joining this IWN SWA webinar. On behalf of the International Water Association, I would like to welcome all of you and hope you will enjoy the webinar and also learn something from it. And as you probably already know, that the International Water Association is a membership association uh, which uh, aim, aim at supplying a platform for water professionals worldwide to connect, to share knowledge, to e exchange ideas, technologies across the sectors, across regions and other diverse communities. We are by members and for members. And IWA has over 70 years um, history. We have more than 10,000 members from different countries, regions, and different types of organizations and companies. And all of the uh, members, they organize themselves into 50 specialist groups and two clusters covering all areas of water-related research technologies and the management. And IWA also leads uh, thematic programs like uh, Basins of Future, City of Future, Water Sanitation and Services, and, and Digital Water. And IWA has a publishing house, which has uh, more than 17 professional journals, and including the top journal in the water sector, Water Research Journal. IWA has now uh, three offices mainly, in, one in London as headquarters, and one in Nanjing, China uh, as the global operations and one in Chennai uh, as regional office. Uh, for individuals who really want to uh, exchange uh, in, with global leaders in the water sector, uh, I would like to suggest of you to participate in specialist groups, which is a very effective way to meet and share with like-minded peers in specific areas and also uh, um, um, attending specific um, activities, like mentioned on the slide. And um, for the younger ones, I would really encourage you to join the IWA's community, Young Water Professionals and the Emerging Water Leaders Program. And um, this program uh, enables you to have more opportunities to learn from international mentors and also being recognized globally. And for companies, we have many different uh, initiatives and programs uh, you can learn and exchange internationally, uh, such as uh, the water policy and regulation, water wide cities, basin connected cities, smart utilities, and digital water. Uh, we are also uh, working on an innovations, innovators platform, and um, mainly uh, and promoting best practices as well. And all these kind of innovations and best practices and your good experiences can be shared through a variety of uh, uh, platforms uh, on the IWA, including our website, the Source Magazine, the IWA Publishing, as well as any, many other channels and uh, activities. And specifically in the Southeast Asia, we all know that there are a lot of uh, water challenges we are facing, also including the topic relating to today's webinar on the wastewater treatment and resource recovery. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to call for collaborations to work together for improving water services and uh, sanitation in the region. Uh, we on the platform like uh, International Water Association, and also the regional networks such as Singapore Water Association. Um, please feel free to contact me if you have any uh, further questions or need more information. And thank you and uh, hope you enjoyed the webinar. 
Thank you very much for the welcome address, uh, Dr. Lee. Now it gives me pleasure to introduce the presenters for today. Okay. First, we have Dr. Wendy Cho, Business Development Manager from Mayton Private Limited, Singapore. Next, we will have Mr. Chu Tikoy, Business Development Manager, Century Water Systems and Technologies Private Limited. From China, we have Ms. Kristen Yang and Mr. Zhao Peng both from South Tech Technology Development Group Limited. Last but not least, from Marche Polytechnic University, Italy, Professor Francisco Fattoni. Professor Francisco is also the IWA fellow. So now let's welcome our first presenter for today. Over to you, Wendy. Thank you, Jess. Um, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Wendy. I'm the Business Development Manager of Nathan. So um, can I confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, Wendy. Yeah, good. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so um, today's topic, it will be um, uh, I'll briefly uh, introduce Nathan, then we will talk about three case studies that we have done in water and wastewater recycling yeah, to um, help to recover the resource, which is water. Yeah, so uh, Nathan Plant um, is a Singapore company we started in 1994. So um, along the way that we have developed our core expertise in system integration, particularly on membrane and uh, applications. And along the way, we have developed our expanded our uh, territory from Singapore out to the regional uh, countries. Um, we are one uh, of the very rare company in this region that owns the in-house fabrication capability. So we design, we built by ourselves. And since uh, 2017, um, we have joined a larger water group, the Skin Water Group from Germany. So we are the first and only investment of skin in the Asia. So we have access to the European and the North American technologies. So uh, along the years, right, we also um, help to in integrate the advanced and innovative technologies, not only in the Asia, but also we bring in the advanced technologies from Europe and North America to help to develop the water industry in the uh, Southeast Asia and also Australian market. Yeah. So along the way, we have developed our capability like uh, into a one-stop solution provider for our customers. On one side, we are able to design and build water and wastewater system and also, also a water recycling system. And on the other hand, we are also able to support the customer with different kinds of services, including consultancy and design, and also after sales maintenance and even including the digital water management. We have our own digital uh, water apps so that our customer can manage their system at the handphone and iPad and remotely. Yeah. So um, our core competency is system integration. So from small scale to big scale, uh, we are able to build the system in the skid and the skid will be easily transportable in the sea freight containers. This largely reduces the site installation on uh, time and cost. And not only the open skid, we are also um, the, one of the pioneers who knows how to build the containerized system. We make our containers uh, seaworthy uh, sh to ship to the customer site, then and plug and play to, to be operated. And last but not least, we also uh, do design and build. We, we take turnkey um, project for, to build the system for our customer. And this is especially important for our um, industrial based customer since that um, we are the water experts. We take all the hassles to build up the system so that they can enjoy the pure water for the convenience of their production and manufacturing processes. So here is the first uh, case study I'm going to showcase today. This is the system that we recycle the gray water, 
free water collected in the hotel and offices. And the collected free water is treated by our proprietary UF system and returned to the cooling water tank for makeup water application. And here on the left side, you can see that our UF system is a bit special than the conventional UF. Usually the UF, the two side pot are sealed so that one and uh, the wastewater goes in and is going to be filtered inside and the other side comes out with a clean water. But for this particular start, uh, type of the end flux that we own in house, each and every hollow fiber will block at the end of the fiber. So by this and by supplying the air together with the thick water, it, the, the fiber keeps on shaking, keeps on a, a bit of a turbulence while doing while performing the filtration. So the turbulence created by the air is able to minimize the membrane falling. And this membrane, this type of the membrane configuration is especially designed for the wastewater recycling applications, which can take a slightly higher suspended solid load and even a higher organic load as compared to the conventional two end coated UF membranes. And this is the second case study that we have done in Singapore. This is the is a recycling system that we have built in uh, in a district cooling plant to recover the blown down wastewater from the cooling tower. So as everyone of us knows, uh, Singapore is the industry is depending on largely on the new water. So for this particular plant, they are using the new water as a blown down. Then uh, sorry, they are using the new water as a top up water. Then later on, when we blown down, the conductivity of the Cooling tower blown down is around 1,000. One and this wastewater is collected in a blown down water tank, then followed by treatment of the UF to remove the suspended solid, then an, an, another RO to remove the uh, TES. Then the permit from the, the RO, we are able to reduce the conductivity to less than 1,500, which meets the new water quality. So this recycled water is popped back to the makeup water tank, which is the new water tank, and blend away the fresh new water tank to make up the to to use again as the cooling water top up water, makeup water. So in this case here, you can see the OPEX of operating the UF system is very relatively low. It's only calculated as 40 cents, including electricity, chemical, and the maintenance. So um but new water is more, much more expensive than this. So you can see the saving per year is quite substantial in terms of the uh, return of investment. And thanks to the development of the new low energy and low falling BWL membrane, this system that is able to operate at more than 70% of recovery, though that it is receiving a wastewater. So here's the last case study where I'm going to showcase today. This is the project that we have done in Thailand. It is a bit special as you can see here on the uh, picture on the right. It is a sanitarily designed wastewater recovery system. So each and every part on this system, it meets the food grade requirement and it meets the F&B industry sanitary requirement including the membrane inside. Here you can see the membrane. We are not using the normal membrane. This is a full fit membrane that has been specially designed for the F&B industry. And this membrane is able to undergo hot water sanitization for bacterial control. The background of this project is that the bottling company, they are having a plan to expand their production. They want to install another 24,000 bottle per hour of the packaging plant. But due to the local registration limit, the government is not giving them additional well water grant. So faced with the limited water supply, but they want to improve their income by producing more bottles. They have to squeeze more water from the existing water supply. Then we have 
we give them a solution that we collect RO region water, treat by a two-pass RO, two-pass RO system, then produce. So we squeeze another 12 meter cube per hour of the pure water that is readily available for their bottling applications. But this is a food and beverage plant. So the machine cannot be stopped because while the machine stops, the stagnant water will cause bacterial breach. Since we are getting the RO reject water for this system, it is highly dependent on the RO reject production. When the upstream, the primary RO system is not in work, working condition for cleaning, for maintenance, or for any troubleshooting, which means that this system will also not be able to use because it has no RO reject to fit with. Then consider of this, we have come up with a very creative solution that this to pass our own is we have some we have built in some automatically automatic valves so that we can change the pipe configuration so when the primary RO system is not in working condition to produce RO reject the system through operating through operating of the HMI, you will be able to transport into transformed into a three-stage RO system, taking the well water as a feed water. And because the well water is much better in terms of the TBS, so the system will be able to produce the much higher uh, flow rate for the production. Then by doing this, it highly improved the plant water reliability because this is not only a recovery water system, it also acts as a standby system for their production. Yeah, so um, in, in order to help the uh, operators to mitigate from the trouble of the operation, we also built the fully automatic hot water sanitization with this system. So this system can be operated with minimum supervision, minimum operators. Yeah. So another special thing of this system is that after the polishing and after the RO permit goes to the ozonation, the ozonated RO permit is directly filled into the bottled water rather than goes back into the raw water. So this is one of the system that we have done far away than water reuse, but, uh, but is a direct water, portable water application. Yeah, so with this, that's all for my presentation today. Thank you very much. Very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Benito. Thank you for sharing your complex technology and case studies. It's very interesting. Now I would like to call our second speaker, Mr. Chiu Tikoi from Century Water Systems and Technologies Private Limited. Over to you, Mr. Chiu. Uh, thank you, Jess, and thank you, Vivian. Uh, hello and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Chiu from Central Water System and Technologies. Uh, Singapore. Um, thank you for inviting us, webinar, and opportunity to share on alkaline waste recycling system in glove manufacturing using silica carbide membranes. Uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, Century Water is an innovative company specializing in water and wastewater treatment and a chemical separation in electronics and pharmaceuticals industry. Our HQ is in Singapore and branches in Malaysia and China, as well as distributor Indonesia and Myanmar. So our key technologies is uh, nano peel, nano filtration membrane for drinking water, evaporation, pre evaporation membrane for alcohol dehydration, hydro peel, fine ultra filtration membranes, and um, mosinite silica carbide membrane ultra filtration for the water applications. So our mosinite flat sheet. Ceramic membranes is a good in particles remover 
as low as 0.1 microns, strong negative surface charge at pH 6 to 9 is a hydrophilic, simple process, easy to integrate into existing system, retrofitable, low pressure pump required. Also low cost on high water efficiency, low energy consumption, and the membrane lifespan up to 10 years. So our membrane is designed in modular and stack up with six meters square each module. So comparing with the chemical resistance with other ceramic membranes, the silica carbide have a strong resistance. The advantages compared with sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide, hydrofluoride acid, nitrate acid, etc. The typical application of the silica carbide membrane can be applied on groundwater treatment of seawater, surface water, MBR, acid and alkaline recycle with etc. with different range of flux. So I would like to sharing on a project in Malaysia's uh, glove manufacturing, uh, the standard modular. So um, this standard modular system with a capacity of one cubic meter per hour or 20 meter cubic per day consists of membrane tank, CIP tank, backwash tanks, and pumps. So it's a very modular, it's a very small footprint and easy for installations. Uh, I would like to share on our project case study, since the project are very similar in this industry, I will pick one of the case study. So as a glove manufacturing plant A uh, located in Malaysia, uh, this ceramic membrane is used to reclaim alkaline waste collected in the alkaline tank. The alkaline waste liquid contain metal ions, surfactants, sodium hypochlorite, and discharge to the wastewater treatment plant. Century Water proposed to recover alkaline waste with recovery rate of 50 to 80% back to the alkaline preparation tank. The target is to save and reduce caustic consumption for productions. So as you can see over here, the design flow is uh, 0.5 cubic meter per hour and max 3 cubic meter per hour. The alkaline concentration are 3 to 5% with a pH of 13 to 14. Temperature 60 degrees Celsius. Total suspended solid 3 to 800 ppm. So our expected result achieved are total expanded suspended solid less than 100 ppm and pH and concentration unchanged. So further to this, the system is required a very small footprint with 2.5 square meter low energy consumption as 1.5 kilowatt per hour, utility 68% per cubic meter, 50 to 80% recovery rate. So our payback for this system is around less than one year. The membrane are regenerable upon CIP clean in progress with a flux of 85 to 500 LMH. So uh, there's a difference between the feed, the concentrate and the permeate. And this is how our membrane is being installed. So this membrane also can be installed as uh, two modular. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, Jess. Thank you very much, Mr. Chiu Tikoi, for sharing with us on your company's various membrane technology and the case studies. Okay. Now, I would like to hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, you can put your, your slides to a slideshow. Perfect. Yes, okay, good. That's good. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right. So, thank you. Uh, yeah, while waiting for Christine, uh, I will uh, present uh, European innovation cases uh, that uh, have been uh, delivered uh, or uh, under, are currently under validation uh, within uh, large innovation actions uh, funded uh, by the most prestigious uh, research innovation uh, program uh, in Europe, that is Horizon 2020. In particular, I'm going to uh, address uh, the issues of circular economy, digitalization, and nature-based solutions in water. And uh, I will uh, quickly present uh, the main results of uh, large activities. Consider that each of these projects I'm going to present as a budget from five to more than 15 million euros. So I uh, will uh, present just some uh, sketches of uh, the results, but you're invited to visit the website so where further information are available. I will focus on uh, digital solution, and the major focus will be on digital solutions uh, uh, that are currently under demonstration within the project Digital Water Cities. Then I will move to the circular economy applied to water systems. In terms of resource recovery, I have also the honor to be the general secretary of the resource recovery cluster within the International Water Association. And Water smart industrial symbiosis, uh, how to link water in cities and water in industries. And finally, I will mention quickly about the nature based solution applied for water resiliency and uh, for water management in uh, small and decentralized uh, places. What is Digital Water City? The first project about digitalization in water systems. There is a huge effort to increase the digital transitions of water systems. What we are doing uh, in uh, Digital Water City, here you can see the website to have further information. We are addressing the public health, the investments, and the public engagement. It is very important to have the citizens involved by demonstrating 15 advanced digital solutions, in particular uh, uh, by gathering together, and this is the case of all European innovation actions, uh, end users that uh, we call problem owners, so the water utilities. Uh, here you can see five water utilities from Milano in Italy, Sofia in Bulgaria, Paris, Copenhagen and Berlin. Technology provider and companies that are delivering solutions. So these projects are not research projects because the vast majority of the partners are companies. This is the way we do research within the Horizon 2020 for innovation actions. In particular, we're addressing the full water cycle at city level by addressing the key challenges, such as uh, water reuse in Italy, such as bathing water and flooding in Paris uh, and Copenhagen, such as uh, river water quality and drinking water sources in Berlin. Going to the main solutions, uh, for bathing water, we are delivering uh, early warning system to forecast bathing water quality and communicate this to the public. This is very relevant. Uh, uh, for example, uh, in 2024, we will have the next Olympic Games in Paris uh, and uh, bathing water is a key challenge that has been addressed by the water utility locally. And uh, for, to do this, we are delivering digital solutions, early warning system, but also new sensors for the real-time detection of pathogens, as you can see here. For drinking water, we are delivering uh, uh, a system for the predictive asset management of drinking water wells by using uh, augmented reality. In this case, uh, you can see how linking real-time information, augmented reality, we can give more information about what cannot be seen directly because it's underground. What about sewer system? For sewer system, we are delivering uh, innovative monitoring of sewer illicit connection by machine learning and activated intelligence systems that are elaborating data in real time from your wastewater quality. 
We are delivering low cost combined sewer overflow monitoring technologies using temperature sensors, so low cost to have quantitative ideas of the impact of combined sewer overflow can have quite a relevant impact on the pollution. We have to bear in mind that uh, with the Green Deal in Europe, the zero pollution is a major challenge. And also we are delivering uh, advanced tools uh, for the 48 hour sewer flow forecast uh, in order to predict and to take action and to support decisions of the operators. At the level of uh, with the treatment plants, uh, we are addressing uh, the real time control of treatment plants uh, and sewer retention capacities. So the integrated system is addressed in terms of operation, but also in terms of water reuse. In 2020, in Europe, we had the, the new regulation for the minimum quality standard for water reuse, that is uh, uh, one of the priority in the agenda of water policies. And we are delivering an early warming system for water reuse for irrigation and agricultural purposes taking into account the risk management, environmental risk, but also public uh, related risk. In terms of water use, we are not considering only the water infrastructure, but we are matchmaking the water need from agriculture and the water availability from uh, wastewater treatment plants uh, by using remote monitoring of water stress, uh, by using uh, water demand from agriculture and by matching the offer of the treatment plant and the demand from agriculture. Finally, in order to have uh, the citizen involved, uh, because we are talking about public infrastructure, first of all, uh, we are using uh, augmented reality to communicate groundwater issues with the public that is very difficult to communicate because, again, it's not visible, it's not tangible directly from the citizens, but also serious games to communicate the benefit of reuse in terms of water, energy, food, climatic nexus to show we cannot address only water issues without addressing energy and carbon footprint. The success of digital solution does not depend only on the product, but also on the safe integration of the utility system. Because when we talk about the digitalization, interoperability and cybersecurity is a major issue. We are dealing with the priority and critical infrastructure when we talk about water. In fact, we are dealing with the cyber risk we are dealing with ontology and fireware. Fireware is an open source platform that is supporting the smart and wooden wise cities. And we are also delivering stress testing platform. So in few words, Digital Water City is leveraging the potential of data and digital technologies, is boosting the water management in five metropolitan cities in Europe, is promoting the value of digital solutions for the technology provider, and is achieving a new step in the integration of digital solution in existing infrastructure to have the practical integration of digitalization, also with concern to cybersecurity, interoperability, and governance support. But digitalization uh, is not a value for its own. Uh, digitalization can be a value even more if coupled with sector economy, with resource recovery. And now uh, I will spend two minutes to present quickly Smart Plant. Smart Plant is in a Horizon 2020 innovation action that I have been coordinating from 2016 to 2020, was involving uh, 26 partners, uh, but 20 companies and seven universities, again, to show that uh, this is the way we do innovation, innovations in Horizon 2020. And the uh, objective of Smart Plant was to reduce the energy consumption, to improve the energy efficiency, to reduce the carbon footprint and in parallel as added value to recover materials such as fertilizers, phosphorus and nutrients, such as biopolymers, such as cellulose, and of course uh, recovering water for use with this material to produce final consumer industrial products to create intersector value chain for material recovery, so not only for energy and for water, but also for materials. This project was awarded uh, by the iWater Prize as best uh, 120 innovation action on water in 2018. Uh, and we were working on six uh, small to very large wastewater treatment plants uh, from 40,000 to 2 million population equivalent uh, 
integrating the plants uh, in Italy, in Greece, in UK, in Spain, in the Netherlands, uh, in the different Francisco? stages. Uh, yeah, we can yes? see your slide. Can you share your slide again? Ah, sorry. Uh, change. Um, Yes, you can see now. Okay, you can also hear me now, yes. right? Yes, can. Yes, you can see and uh, you just uh, put to this uh, slide. I don't know why. Okay, oh, now you okay. can see the full presentation, right? Yes, yes, good. It's good. Excellent. Okay, oh. thank you very much. I don't know what happens. <laughs> Everything works fine. Uh, ben, probably the bandwidth, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, uh, what did we achieve? Uh, again, you can visit the website smartpanda.eu. I have reported the website because each of them is uh, a 15 million innovation action project. So please go to the website for further information. Uh, we were demonstrating uh, 11 technical and digital solutions uh, to upgrade these uh, real treatment plants uh, and to recover materials. Uh, these solutions were also uh, validated by the European Environmental Technology Verification for the environmental performances uh, that we were proposing and validating. And uh, finally, in terms of uh, evidences, uh, here you can see the long term evidence based results. After more than two years of operation of the demonstration plants, uh, we were able to recover cellulose from two to seven kilos per person per year. For the dioxyacanoe, a biopolymer to produce bioplastics, 1 to 1.2 kg per person per year, calcium phosphate, 0408 kg per person per year, struvite, ammonia, ammonium sulfate, biofertilizer, and all these materials were recovered together with energy saving, greenhouse gas emission reduction, and sludge reduction. This was our first challenge. Efficiency first resource recovery together with efficiency. Now we are working uh, on uh, a scheme that is linking uh, the city and the industry, what we call uh, water smart uh, utility industry symbiosis. In particular, we are working in the project Ultimate. Again, you can see further information on the website here, where we are showcasing uh, High profile water smart data analysis cases in uh, nine places around Europe that you can see here to demonstrate technologies for recovery and safe reuse of water energy materials supported by digitalization and delivering new business models for circular economy. Again, circular economy is a keyword. Within Ultimate, finally, we are demonstrating how living labs can uh, enable circular strategies for territories. So we have to demonstrate technologies, yes, but we have to demonstrate how a region is improving the water management. This project has more than 15 million budget with digitalization, technologies, citizen engagement activities, and even in this case, under the coordination of KWR from the Netherlands, we are bringing together companies from small to very large, end users, non-profit organization, and university. One case study that we are directly delivering here in Italy is uh, reusing water from municipal wastewater to the Solve chemical area. And in particular, we are improving the current treatment plant of Rossignano that is already delivering about 3 million cubic meter water for industrial use in Solve chemical plant improving the system by reducing the seawater intrusion into the sewer system and addressing the salinity. This is limiting the potential for water use. How? By, you, by working on the sewer system, on the early warning detection of salinity, but also by working on the matchmaking between the different uses that at industrial level we can do of municipal wastewater 
and the different quality of water that we are having along the year. Be in mind that in summer and in winter, we can have different seawater intrusion in coastal areas. That is a key issue. In addition, in, in the ultimate, we are addressing the nexus. So again, water, energy, material, and carbon footprint is addressed in terms of technologies, but also in terms of uh, emissions and footprinting, because we have to be aligned with the building objectives. If we move from a city industry symbiosis to industrial symbiosis and industrial causal loops, this project, Aqua Spice, uh, is addressing large industrial plants. In this project, uh, we have the participation of large chemical industries. You can see here Dow, BAS, Solvay, Upras, and so on. We are working in all these large industrial sites to close the loop and to deliver cyber physical systems. So, to use digitalization applied to energy and water efficient technologies to close loops in industrial processes by membrane systems, by biological systems, so different technologies all integrated again by collaboration, large collaboration by companies, universities, utilities, and no profit organizations. An example that we are doing in Italy, we are addressing the wastewater from peroxide production for uh, the final uh, reuse for cooling water of this wastewater that is currently discharged after treatment. So we are addressing uh, the uh, wastewater treatment and reuse with the reduction of carbon footprint for the industrial production and for the wastewater management. Last project that I want to present is about nature-based solution. You can find further information here at the website that you can see uh, at the top of this slide. In Idrusa, we are working on rural areas. We are working on decentralized solutions by delivering the low cost natural systems to close loops, in particular in Mediterranean islands. We're working in three Greek islands to treat wastewater, to use this wastewater for agroforestry, to harvest rainwater, to, uh, to desalinate by local solution seawater, and to integrate this system at a real scale with the digitalization. As you can see, the final aim is not only to preserve water, but also to preserve water smart economy by improving ecotourism. Here in this case, the collaboration again is the vast majority by companies, and I cannot go one by one, but you can go to the website, including a heavy and important engagement of the municipalities and citizens. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, of course, uh, I will be very happy to have further interaction with you. And this is my email. Please contact me for any further information. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Professor Francisco, for sharing with us on the uh, various EU challenges and how your Polytechnic your University is overcoming with these issues with the various uh, digital technologies. Okay, we are ready to call back uh, Miss Christine from South Tech Technology. Miss Christine, okay. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Christine from South Tech Technology Development Group. So, uh, first, I would like to make a brief presentation of our company. South Tech was founded in 2002. It's a large scale high tech environmental protection enterprise specializing in treatment of water pollution providing world-leading distributed water treatment equipment and system solutions for domestic and foreign users. So today I will share our alkaline residue waste water treatment technology and our concentrated brine recycling technology. So our alkaline Alkaline residue waste water mainly comes from vacuum distillation unit and the catalytic cracking unit in the uh, oil refining and chemical industry. It's a highly difficult to treat waste water with high salt concentration. Conventional treatment technology use white oxidation and catalytic white oxidation technology under high temperature and high pressure. So after reaching the emission standard, uh, the effluent is discharged into nitro water and the, for this that, uh, conventional technology, the investment on the operation costs are high. 
So to this end, our company has carried out the technical exploration in this area and has achieved the breakthrough. So and the normal temperature and pressure, uh, in addition to treating wastewater up to the standard, our technology can achieve the layer recovery. So this is our main technical process. The alkaline wastewater enter the mercaptan treatment section for pre-oxidation treatment, and the oxidized mercaptan is returned to the recovery tank through air flotation for recover and reuse. So then the effluent from the mercaptan treatment section enter the sodium carbonate conversion stage. At this stage, lime is added to combine the carbonate and the calcium iron in the wastewater to produce calcium carbonate precipitation. And the concentration of hydroxide in the water will be greatly increased. After the reaction, the concentration of sodium hydroxide in the wastewater reaches 12 to 15%. After the wastewater passes through the inorganic membrane neutral filter to remove the impurities, it enters the core device of the whole process. Uh, called the alkali extraction device. The alkali residue wastewater is separated and recycled with high purity sodium hydroxide at this stage. Uh, through the biological treatment plus the catalytic oxid oxidation treatment plus the biological treatment, the effluent reached the discharge standard. So through the processing of the approach, this, this process, this technology could, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, this technology finalized realized the resource recovery and the reuse of barrels waste such as more capital and sodium hydroxide in alkaline residue with the water. And also the pollutants that cannot be reused for the time being are treated with technology at room temperature and pressure and discharged up to the standard. So our company used this technical process to carry out the two-year process in Jinmen branch of CPCC and successfully realized the recover of sodium hydroxide and the discharge of sewage up to the standard. So here are some pictures of this project, uh, which are the, plan, uh, the layout plan, the set plan, the mercaptan removal devices, and the offline extraction device. So next, uh, we're going to talk about the concentrated brine recycling technology. The con uh, concentrated brine is a high salt water discharge from the industry enterprise. Multifactors such as the high salt and complex organic and aorganic pollutants restrict the effective recovery and utilization of the concentrated brine. At the time, the discharge the concentrated brine will cause the pollution to the ecological environment. So our, uh, this is our treatment process. Uh, the concentration brine is subject to multi-stage calculation and uh, the filtrated in a microfiltration reaction tank. This pre-treatment effectively removes the hardness, suspended solid, silicon in the water, and the effluent enter the RO system for treatment. The pure water produced by RO enters the reused water tank for the next stage, and the RO concentrated water undergoes advanced oxidation to remove the organic pollutant, and then pass through the usual filtration system and enter the nanofiltration system. The water produced by the nano filtration system enter the evaporation crystallizer through the high pressure RO system to produce sodium chloride with a purity of more than 98.5%. The nano filtration concentrated water enters the concentrated water tank and then pass through the evaporation crystallizer to produce a sodium sulfate crystal with a purity of more than 99%. So the advantage of the whole system is that uh, the pre-treatment and the multi-stage membrane concentration process reduce the water entering the evaporation and the crystallization step by 75%, which uh, significantly reduce the investment and operating cost. Also, the process, uh, the process is complete and the requirement for the effluent water, uh, the, re the quality requirement for the effluent are relaxed which can be suitable for multi-industry and various 
type of hydro waste water. The process can be adjusted according to the water quantity and quality. The quality of produced water is uh, excellent and stable. Uh, the heavy metal iron and uh, the salt are uh, thoroughly removed. The system has a high degree of process and degradation, occupies small area and has a high degree of automation. So our company applied this concentrated brine recycling technology to Ningdong Coal Chemical Industry Park and finally realized the normal separation of the salt. The purity of the separated sodium sulfate is 99% and purity of sodium chloride is 98.5%. So that's all for our introduction today. So if you have any question, you could consult our website or contact me by email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Christine. A big thank you to all the four presenters for sharing their company's technologies and case studies. It definitely has been a very interesting and informative session. Now we come to the QA segment. There are a couple of questions here, we can see. Okay. Um, Okay, the first question we have is for Dr. Wendy. The question is, what is the usual membrane lifespan for wastewater recycle application? Um, hello. Um, we have seen a, usually the replacement will be between two to three years. Okay. Okay, so three to three. Okay, we have the second question here from uh, PK Ho. It says, uh, I'm not too sure if this is for Mayton or is for Mr. Chu, Century Water. Is the ceramic membrane prone to organic fouling? Can CIP be conducted to remove the fouling? Yes, it do. Uh, normally, we use uh, sodium hypo to clean up the organic fouling. Okay. If there is a scaling, we will use a uh, acidic form of a uh, chemical such as uh, acid nitrate. Uh, back to you, uh, Dr. Wendy. There's another question here. For recovery of RO reject with application of RO membrane, is that feasible by applying cleaning and parameters fine tuning? And also what type RO membrane was used? It's it the membrane from Maiton plant. It's the question from uh, from Mr. Kawai Az. Uh I'm not too sure what you mean by applying cleaning and parameter fine tooling. Uh, so probably the easiest question here. The L membranes are not by Maiton plant. Uh, we are system integrator, so we use the other uh, we use the membrane manufacturing like Dupont and Nitodenko. Yeah, so um, the selection of the RO membrane depends on the application. Like for the cooling power blown down, it, the TDS is not very high, but we are looking at energy energy saving. So we choose the low energy, low falling BWL membrane. But for the RO reject, because it is put in the FMB industry, so we use the FMB qualified RO membrane. If it is not used in the FMB industry, which we have done somewhere others, we usually will choose the high rejection, low energy membrane. For example, if it is DuPont, we will use BW30HRLE. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we have one question for Dr. Francis, Professor Francisco. You have been the coordinator of a successful H2, H2020 innovation action that has validated a portfolio of resource recovery technologies and products. Which are the most encouraging and the most critical results? Uh, Dr. Francisco, can you hear us? Oh, we can't hear you actually. Oh, okay, I, I, I okay. put everything. Yeah, now I can speak. 
Okay. Thank you very much for your uh, questions. Well, uh, the technologies we have demonstrated uh, are currently under full scale implementation. So, so this is uh, very encouraging because, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, biopolymers recovery from serious large, we are really at the frontier of uh, the circular economy solutions. And now we are uh, uh, designing a full scale implementation of the solution. In addition, we were able to address the legislative barriers end of waste barriers, because when we are recovering material from sewage, of course, the public perception has to be analyzed, addressed, and safety has to be addressed. So when we think about uh, water reuse, materials reuse, uh, we were uh, uh, having uh, uh, interaction with citizens uh, and we were able to support the governance. So technologies have been demonstrated, I would say that the technologies, honestly, they have high technology readiness level. Uh, the major challenges uh, are for the governance, are to support legislation, are to demonstrate safety. And that's why we need these uh, very important uh, uh, projects uh, that now are supporting also the engagement of the policymakers. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Francisco. We have one last question. And uh, this question is for Ms. Christine Salter. Uh, the question is, what is the capacity of the alkali residual wastewater treatment system? Yes. Uh, so now the this alkali wastewater belongs to a high concentration and difficult to, you know, to, to treat. So the volume is more. The project we do is generally less than one ton per hour. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. A pleasure. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you once again to all of our presenters answering the questions. So any participants have any further questions or inquiries, do email to SWA and we shall go back to you with answers. Okay, on my screen now you can see the upcoming events we have for June and also July. As you know, next week the SIWW 2021 online will start. So do visit SIW Change One online platform and do participate in these various um, webinars we have for you all and also in July. Okay. Um, before we much appreciated. Okay. Once again, a big thank you to Dr. Lee, Hong Lee, and IWA for co organizing this webinar with SWA. And we look forward for your future collaboration. Thank you and stay safe. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.